Hey everyone, Eric with Urban Story Studio here, and today I want to show you how to do a shadow study in SketchUp. But not just any normal shadow study where you're turning the shadows on and maybe rotating them or seeing them as scenes or animation, but actually put the shadows as geometry in your model so that you can stylize them or actually move things around and see multiple times of day all coinciding or coalescing at the same time. Let's just get to it. Okay, so I've got a very simple model for this demo. I really just wanted something with an interesting shadow. So this is not an actual project that I'm working on, but I've used this in the past. I've also got some scenes set up. So you can see here that I've got some shadows set at sort of the two extremes. So this is 9 a.m. on 621, which is the summer solstice, and then noon on 621, again, also the longest day of the year, summer solstice, and 3 p.m., which is something that you might see in the afternoon. So again, we got the morning, noon, and afternoon on the longest day of the year, which means the sun's gonna be up high and the shadows are gonna be the shortest. So now we can compare and contrast that to the longest day of the year. So in this case, when I say sorry, I mean the longest shadows of the year, which is the shortest day of the year. This is when the sun is low in the sky. And that is the winter solstice. So 9 a.m., again, look at this difference in shadows. This is in Colorado, by the way, so it's just um, obviously it'll vary depending on your location. We've got noon on 1221 and 3 p.m. on 1221. So I can look at this. I've detached my camera location from my scenes, and I've done that on purpose because I don't know if I want to see my shadows move here from perspective, or maybe I want to look at it from top view. So now that's cool. I can see the different shadows, but for example, I want to compare. I want to do a shadow study where I get to see what is happening in this area here, which is the north side of the building, and I want to look at different times of day or even different times of year so that I can see where the sun is and I can really think about planning, like putting a bench or some tables or something. Whether I want shade or sun, I know exactly where, no matter what I'm working on, to place it. So this is where a cool extension, it's called TIGS Shadow Projector. I don't know if you ever use this one, it's called, it's pretty simple. So one thing we need to do before we can project any shadows is we need a solid plane or face to project onto. So let's just draw a rectangle and I'm going to set it so that it's facing down. And I don't know if this is my longest shadow and you want to make sure that you have a plane that covers the whole area that you're working. So if you already have a ground plane, you can use that. Now the problem with having your ground plane is that it needs to be exploded. Or, I haven't tried this, I'm going to try going into a group. And then you go into the group, so you actually have to select the raw face in order for this to work. So I haven't tried it inside of a group, let's try it now. Otherwise, i got to explode it and we'll do it again. So come up here to Tools. TIG Shadow Projector, doesn't really matter which order we're going in. I'm going, I'm starting with uh, 3 p.m., so the afternoon, and New Shadow Projection. There's a few options. We can do just lines, just faces, or faces and edges. Now, I don't really care too much because I can always fill faces in later. I can also always hide edges. But for now, let's just do faces and edges so I can see what that looks like. And I'm going to click OK. So if you can see what happened here, now it's inside of the group. So if I hide this thing, I'm going to lose my shadow plane. But if I turn my shadow off, you can see this is pretty cool. My shadow is still there. My shadow is now geometry. So I'll do that again. I'm going to come into my shadow group, in this case, my shadow plane. And I'm going to go switch the time of day to noon. And I'm going to go tools, TIG shadow projector, new shadow projection, click OK and it should show up there. It is, again, if I hide that now, excuse me, hide the plane itself, I now have two groups. If I turn those shadows off, you can see it's no longer dependent on having shadows on. It is actually now geometry in the model. And again, just to reinforce this point, if I wanted to go ahead and extrude this shadow, I can, and there it is. So what I'm gonna do is undo that. I wanna undo my hiding my plane. There it is. Okay, cool. Let's do it one more time. Let's go backwards. We're going to go to 9 a.m. 
and then we're going to go tools again if this is um, too much work for you you can always come over here and set a shortcut in this case i set shift o for tig shadow projection so all i have to do is hit shift o for projection that's how we're going to remember that one and then i'm going to click ok and there it is. Again, at the end of the day, if I don't need this plane, once I've done my shadow projections, I can either put it on a frozen tag or I can just say, I don't need it, I, I'm gonna delete it. So now what's really cool is I have a group with just my shadows here. One thing you can see if I turn my X-ray mode on or if I hide my structure, one thing you can see is that it casted a shadow from the building, which means that it grabbed the ground plane. It grabbed everything from the building on. So if you wanted to, did not want to show the building footprint, then you'd want to remove that part from the plane that you're casting onto, because it's actually the footprint itself where it touches the ground, casts a shadow. So in this case, I could pre-remove that and get rid of it, but I'm fine because if I have my building here, it's kind of a moot point, um, because with the building there, it does cover up that shadow that's on the ground. You can see it's Z-fighting because now I have duplicate faces there. It's also kind of cool is that I didn't have to select the geometry for what I wanted to cast the shadow. Anything that touched that plane cast that casted a shadow onto it was captured. For example, I got this guy, have my face me um, character, my scale fig, casted a shadow at three different times per day. So what do we do from here? One thing we could do is we could come over here and we could pull in, I'm using another extension, it's called Materials Tools, but you can do this manually, and say remove the materials from the selection. So for example here, I could also come in and maybe even explode all of these. And why would I wanna do that? It might be nice to keep them separate. If you wanna keep them separate, you could tag them, like I wanna put them on tags so that each one only turns on like to animate. Or in this case, I thought maybe it'd be kinda of cool to color them, for example, I may want to come in here and say, listen, anything that happens here, so this is area that is in shade only in the early morning, and this is area that's shade only in the afternoon during the longest day of the year. Now what I could do is come in here and say, but this area in between these two triangles where this line crosses, this is an area where it's going to be in shade all day long. It will always be in shade here because this is noon, this is 9 a.m., and this is 3 p.m. So you can see as that sun, as that shadow, if I were to turn my shadows back on, as that shadow travels across, here we go, turn that x-ray off, you can see as that shadow travels across, there's noon, ding, and then of course as we come over here into 3 p.m., Ding. That area in here, this dark area, it will always, always, always be in the shade in the winter time. So I'm going to give that this darker color. Um, let's see here. I think it might have two faces because when I exploded that group, you may have to delete a face. And then this area here will be in shade. This will be in shade from noon on, and this will be in shade from nine to noon. And then of course this area here would only be in shade from at noon. Uh, so again, depending on how you wanna look at that, it's cool because you could put this on its own tag. For example, it, it automatically, when you create these shadows, it automatically puts it on its own tag. So you can turn that on or off. And then you can use that just again, when you need to for analysis, or you can set it to a scene, maybe come over here and turn your edges off. And you can have that in there for a scene that maybe you wanna send a layout or maybe you wanna export and do some diagramming over the top and put some labels on it. 9 a.m., noon, 3 p.m., shade in the morning, shade in the afternoon, shade all day. And here now when I go to place, for example, people, or when I go to place furniture, I can really start to think about exactly where I want to place that. So that's it, really quick tip here for how to do a shadow analysis inside of SketchUp. Now I didn't actually need to create the scenes, I didn't need to create any tags, 
didn't need to create any extra geometry. All I needed was my building and then this extension, this extension TIG's shadow projector. And then I needed a face, a, an unexploded or a face that I can select that then I can cast the shadow onto. With those things, you can create as many shadows as you want and you can go further if you wanted to. You could do the same process. In this case, I did it for the longest day of the year, sorry, the longest shadows, the shortest day of the year, or I could do this again for the summer, and then you can really compare the extremes between earlier, um, between winter and between summer, and then maybe even throw in the equinox, which you would be in, it would be in March, and that would also be in September. So I'm gonna leave you guys there. I wanna say thank you as always for watching and supporting this channel as it grows and as I test new ideas and share some things that I've discovered. If you've got an idea for what you want to see, let me know down in the comments below. If you think this is useful, if this is something you can use in your project, I would love to hear from you and I will say thank you and see you next time.